To help Helen get started, Natalie has sent her home with a hamper of healthy homework tasks, which she'll have to carry out every day. Time to kiss the old diet goodbye. First task is turn your back on temptation by clearing your kitchen of all pasta. Cheese, ketchup, chocolate and crisps must go. The food in the hamper will be for the next four weeks. Binning the bags of pasta is the only way to get temptation out of harm's way. Seeing this sheet of instructions from Natalie is quite scary for me. And that's basically what I eat every day. So getting rid of all those foods is very scary. I don't know what I will eat. Don't want onion. Mushroom. Banana. No. Beans. Maybe. And a pepper. No. Tomatoes. No. No? Yeah. Don't like tomatoes. Don't like tomatoes at all. And yet you eat tomato ketchup. Yeah. That's horrible. The one thing I was a little bit surprised at, actually, that I thought would be an easy option for her was that she'd go for the tomatoes, because she loves tomato ketchup. I've never expected her to eat everything. I think it would be a huge task to get her to eat a lot of things, but maybe that one will come. Helen grew up in Sittingbourne, Kent, with her two brothers and three older sisters. Her fussy eating has been a problem since infancy. It started for Helen when she was very young, when she was a toddler. Um, I think the first two years of her life, she ate normally. I mean, as a baby, she used to love risotto, so rice, peppers, all sorts of food. But over the next four years, Helen's diet rapidly got worse. By the age of seven, she'd become hysterical when faced with new foods. I used to get to the stage where you think you've got to eat something other than pasta. But in the end, it just became a battle of wheels and she was so distraught and it was upsetting me. Eventually, the family gave up trying to make her eat normally and now avoid the subject. No one even suggests to Helen anymore to try anything different. It's because it's just too much of a sticking point. She gets too upset and that leads us to get upset about it. So it's just ignore it, really. Today, Helen has her first session with clinical psychologist Stephen Briars. It's a chance for him to probe Helen's childhood for the origins of her food phobia. Do you want to tell me when these eating problems first began? I'm told as a baby I used to eat everything, um, pretty much. My earliest memory probably is when I was about three years old. Um, I was force-fed peas and I really needed the toilet and I wasn't allowed to go, so I was force-fed and force-fed until I ended up wetting myself at the table. Um, and ever since then, I haven't really eaten much since it's kind of spiralled downwards and I'm, I'm where I am now. OK, well, that sounds like a fairly traumatic incident. So what happened after that, then? I wouldn't like eating foods I wasn't comfortable with. I don't really remember too much else apart from that, to be honest. So what happens to you if you are presented with a food that you are convinced, for whatever reason, that you won't like? If I try something I don't like, it, I usually heave and okay. I hyperventilate and start to cry. I can usually tell if I will like it or not in my head before trying it. Yeah. In a sense, it's quite a sort of child's way of thinking, isn't it, that you often hear kids rejecting things just on the basis of what it might be like as opposed to experience yeah. of what it what it is like. Did it cause a lot of aggro within the family? Did people get very frustrated with you? Yeah, I come from a big family um, who enjoys their food. I think people couldn't really understand that I didn't like food. I suppose one thing that's going through my mind is, you know, you describe a big family, that's lots of competition for attention. Yep. Yeah? <laughs> Were you conscious as a child of wanting a bit more focus? Um, I wouldn't say conscious of it, because there were so many of us. We, most of us all got on well. Um, we'd play together and do stuff together. Oh, I'm not really sure about that, to be honest. <laughs> OK. So it sounds as if it has set you apart a little bit within your family. You give me quite a lot to mull over, and then hopefully we can start to think about how we can take this forward.